So hey guys, this is Tu. Uh, I'm here with Zach again this week. We're uh, gonna, you know, be doing our live stream again. Um, you know, our real estate show to kind of just help the the community and um, everybody out with what we can. Uh, we're not experts, but maybe Zach is. I'm not an expert, but but we're gonna do what we can. Uh, can someone <laughs> like like? Oh, so we're live streaming on the Hmong Facebook page, but again uh, i do put this on a youtube channel so you guys if you miss it today you could check it out later but can someone say something if you guys could hear us or not um i'm looking out to the side because that's that's the um fix facebook page um hey peter can you hear us peter if someone could just like comment or something like that because there's no point of us uh, again doing a a stream if nobody could hear uh, I think Peter's there. Uh, Peter or Don? Maybe they can't hear us. Oh, we can hear you. All right, there you go. Audio's good. Okay. All right, there you go. So we can get started. <laughs> uh, and if you guys can, please like. Um, I don't know if you could share, but in the future, if this is some uh, posted somewhere else, please like, share, comment, uh, ask your questions. I do read all the comments and questions. Uh, again, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss a topic, and then towards the end, we'll be answering, opening it up, and answering questions that you guys have too. Uh, uh, I mean, about real estate, or if not about real estate, you know, we'll, we'll try to answer those as well. Um, so go ahead and, you know, like, uh, maybe tag your friends or whatever if you're on Facebook. Uh, if you listen to this or watch this later on YouTube, uh, go ahead, like, subscribe on the YouTube channel so you guys can see uh, uh, any updates that we have. Uh, and then also leave comments and suggestions, too, of topics that you guys want to uh, us to discuss. Uh, and we're probably going to be bringing other guests uh, onto this uh, uh, show as well to discuss other topics. And, you know, so write down what you guys want and we'll, we'll try to uh, uh, see if we could, we could do that. Um, so with that said, we do have a few people uh, on, the, on the line. So what we like to do is maybe just kind of do introduction stuff, uh, get started. Uh, let me see. I started watching. Oh, okay. Hey, Don. Uh, Don Xiong. Uh, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for starting a Facebook watch party. Um, yeah. So thanks a lot. Thanks for that. Uh, if you guys have more questions, of course, uh, leave your comments uh, below. Okay, we have a few people, so we'll, we'll, either way, we'll we'll we'll, we'll start the conversation. Uh, so uh, again, my name is Tu. We're gonna do this every Sunday. Um, do this live stream or this episode every Sunday, um, 11 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, so that's around nine o'clock your time, right, Zach? Yeah, still sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a morning person. <laughs> yeah. So this week's topic is going to be how to, uh, about, um, if you guys haven't watched the last two episodes, uh, I'll post that in the description. You guys can watch that later. Uh, but this week's topic is really a combination of both of those episodes together and taking you uh, uh, through those steps. So it's about how to find and fund your deal, basically within the next two months or the next 60 days, you know? how to get that accomplished so that you guys could get that done within the next 60 days. Uh, hey, Chai, thanks for uh, joining us. Um, okay. And so why don't we get started? Uh, Zach, let's do a brief introduction of who you are and how'd you get yeah. into real estate first again? Absolutely. So again, uh, my name is Zach Fang. I've been in the real estate industry for about 20 years now and i'm loving it you know it's given me and my family you know financial freedom and it's it's great we uh personally i've done about 500 transactions you know buying house and selling it and i've done all kinds of um, stuff that's uh, interesting and we're going to go into all, a lot of these in the future uh but it's been a great ride and uh you know two and i were just humbled to be here and kind of share what we know and hopefully we can help and inspire maybe one of you uh, one or two of you out there to go out there and you know get some deals done and by the way today's sunday so uh here's my here's my agenda for sunday all right and i didn't show you guys this last time see to do wake up and just be awesome all right so that's my my sunday to do a list so uh, did you, you woke up have you been awesome yet absolutely 
<laughs> it's good, man. I, I don't have anything, so I'm just, I'm just awake. I'm half awake right now. All right, that's right. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, begin. Um, let me begin by asking some personal questions because sure. they, they've been yeah. uh, people been asking me about it, and I know that uh, I, I kept saying that I was going to ask you these questions, but um, I kept forgetting at the end because the conversation was good. So. Yeah. What else do you do other than real estate? Yeah, so um, I guess I'm kind of a, a, an entrepreneur. So I'm, I'm open-minded to pretty much anything that makes sense. So if you come to me with not just real estate, but any kind of business idea that makes sense, then I will probably participate with you. So, you know, uh, aside from real estate, you know, I'm involved. I teach financial services, you know, retirement planning, life insurance, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, I also have um, some other business that I work with. Uh, I ran laundromats in the past. Uh, I ran car dealerships. I had uh, I had employment agencies. You know, so I I I try to keep an open mind. If there's opportunity, if there's anything that I can do to maybe you know um, get myself to another level, then I'm always open to it. So for any of you listening out there, if you have some kind of great idea, keep me in mind. You know, I I, I don't say yes to everything. But if it makes sense, you know, we can partner up and do something. So that's me. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, on a personal note, what, uh, what do you like to do for fun? Before we get started? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, I moved down to Southern California so I can, I, can, I can enjoy the beaches. So I'm down here and pretty much every day I'm at the beach because it doesn't rain. So, you know, there's never a bad day down here. You know, I used to live in Rhode Island and we have a, I had a friend who had a boat. He always wanted to take me out on his boat. But every time we schedule a time to go out, because he works and he doesn't, he's not free. Every time we schedule a time to go out, it always rains. You know, so every time we're gonna go out, it always rains. So we never got a chance to go out on his boat. But I told him, said his name is Peter. I said Peter, come down here. It never rains. You're never gonna have a bad day. You know, so, <laughs> so, so that's that's the cool thing. So I used to live down there, but you right. recently moved down. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, um, yeah. But you guys have beaches up in Rhode Island too, where you were. Right. Correct, but, but it rains up there, you know, so oh. when, you, when you're going to go to the beach, it, it, you know, it, it, it doesn't, the forecasters are always wrong. So they tell you it's going to be sunny. You get to the beach, it rains, you know, oh, yeah. And, and it's, and it's humid, you know, so you really don't get the enjoyment of it, you know. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that's how it is here in Minnesota now. Yeah. If you want to yeah. go to the lakes, the weather is never, the, the <laughs> forecast is never consistent. correct. Yeah, it's not consistent. Yeah. It will yeah. ruin your parade. Yeah. Yep, for sure. All right. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna recap. Uh, hey, welcome uh, to uh, MB Xiong. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you guys can, please like and comment below, ask your questions, or just comments in general, and uh, uh, we'll we'll try to get through that. But let me recap what we did the last two two episodes, right? The last two weeks or so. Uh, so at the beginning, we talk about how to uh, find deals, right? So. Uh, there are different ways to find deals. I mean, you, you're a wholesaler, so you, you have to find great deals. And every right. real estate yeah, transaction starts with a great deal, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and so there are different ways. You know, you could do, I mean, you've done direct mailing. Um, you know, you've done auctions. Uh, just look on the MLS um, mm. and, and all that stuff. If you guys want to know more about how to uh, find great deals, go watch our last episode or two episodes ago. And then the last week's episode, we discussed how to fund your deals, right? right? And there are various ways to fund your deals as well. Like there's hard money that you talk about. You use private money. You're a private money lender as well, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I, I, I have partners that use HELOC, you know, their home equity line of credit to, to, yeah. to do that. Uh, one of your guys last week partnered up with someone else. So you partnered. Right. Uh, right. You partnered up with someone else to begin with. Right. <laughs> There's things yeah. like SDIRAs, you know, um, yeah. maybe life insurance. Maybe we could talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there are a bunch of different ways to find to fund your deals as well. Uh, other than the right. conventional, I go to the bank, you know, right. uh, 10, 20% down or whatever right. it is. Right. Um, right. Uh, so there are a bunch of ways to fund your deals. And your first deal, when you started it, I mean, to recap, so you did a two or three K long. Yeah. Uh, I say two or three K long. You used about twenty three hundred twenty five, three thousand dollars. 
yeah. of your girlfriend's money. Yeah. <laughs> and then you purchase the property and after you guys are done with it, you guys make about uh like forty K or something like that, right? That's yeah. your first deal. Yeah. Yeah. So see there are ways to get get around right. it. Uh and at that time you did not have good credits or you did not have money or anything like that. So that's sort of your partner, your first partner. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So it can be done. Uh let's briefly talk about uh let me see about today's topic. So what do you kind of do a review of different ways you could purchase, uh, uh, you, you know, your first or second property without, or, or just to purchase a property without, you know, a lot of money or, or little money down. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head when it comes to, um, you know, uh, doing deals, you basically want to find a property that has a lot of a lot of equity, a lot of meat on the bone so that, you know, pretty much everybody wins, you know, uh, especially, especially in the wholesale side of it. So, um, so let me just kind of recap some of the stuff that you mentioned and, and, and it'll, like you say, it'll, it'll, it'll summarize the last two, um, uh, videos that we've done. So, um, you know, as far as finding deals and this is basically, and, and I know that there, on this channel here, there's probably a good few of you, probably everybody ha uh, uh, pretty much experienced, but I'm just going to talk to you as if you're a newbie, a beginner, you know, so that we can kind of maybe uh, cover all the spectrums here. So finding deals. And, you know, like when I first started, I started doing some direct mail. You know, I actually um, sent out some really basic because I'm not I don't know much about marketing. So I just sent out some really basic uh, we buy a house uh, postcards that I, I sent out to uh, a certain zip code. And uh, I would get a bunch of calls, you know, I sent out like 5,000 or so. Mm -hmm. And from that, I typically get about 10 to 15 calls and I usually lock up for two or three deals and it's pretty profitable. So I did that in the past. Uh, and then I, I kind of got a little smart. So I started to nail it down. So you can actually go online or find uh, list providers where you can, you can buy lists of people who are out of state. You know, you can buy lists for probate notices. You can buy lists for, divorce notices, death notices, even and, and foreclosure notices. These, these things are pretty much public uh, 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 records. Um, and then you can target your list a little bit more. What I did back then was I basically just kind of cover a zip code and it worked too. But I think if you were to narrow down your marketing, uh, I think your, your return on investment would be much better. So that's one way of finding deals through the MLS. The other way which you talked about and which I, I, I love to do and it costs very little money in terms of marketing is that I actually do a lot of online auctions, you know? So I go to your typical HubZoo, auction.com, Zoom, HUD Home Store, HomePath, Hudson & Marshall, Realty Bid. So every morning I grab my cup of coffee and I go and I just, I place my bids, you know, um, on these house. And <clears throat> from here, every single month, I, I typically win about two to three of these homes uh, mm -hmm. online and it, when it's online uh, I don't have to be there physically so I buy properties in, in Rhode Island Massachusetts and I'm trying to get some in Minnesota and some in Florida and things like that because it's online I don't have to be there I just need to have uh, boots on the ground to check out the property but for those of you in your local markets you should definitely look at uh, live auctions at the courthouses or maybe at the actual property every state's a little bit different so check how it works but you can actually get some pretty good deals and a lot of these you know, real estate investors and gurus, they do go to these auctions and they buy them, you know, below market value and they turn around, they sell it to you. So why not just do the same thing, right? So uh, that's, an, that's the second way. The third way is basically I buy one or two properties from the MLS uh, per month. And it's very simple because, you know, you all, when you go there, when you check the MLS and I happen to be a, a licensed broker, so I have access to an MLS, but if you don't, then work with a realtor on this, or maybe perhaps, and I highly recommend this, get your real estate license. If you're going to be in the real estate business for long term, might as well. And I'll tell you some benefits of that later on. But I check the daily listings every day, you know, I check uh, uh, properties that need work because usually the realtors will post a notice that it's a handyman property or cash only. So these are the properties that I go in there, I make a low ball offer and I don't win all of them all the time, but I win enough of them to make me some pretty good profits. So just that simply, just simply check in the market every day. You're going to find deals, you know, you're going to find deals. You're going to find deals that will, will work and make sense. You know, if not, then if not, then you're kind of practicing real estate. You're, you're kind of 
you're at least understanding the market, you're understanding how uh, the offer process works, the purchase sales agreement works, how the end, so you, you're at least learning the process anyways. So I highly encourage you guys to uh, do that. Uh, the other thing you guys could do too, as far as find, and finding deals, that if you're not a licensed realtor, maybe do, do some joint marketing with the licensed realtor, you know, so you guys put up half the money each and you, you, you do some direct mail, something like that. So what would happen is that if it's a good deal, you buy it. If it's not a good deal, if the guy's asking for retail dollar, then give it to your realtor friend and he lists it, you know, so that either way, you guys are making, <laughs> either way you guys are making money. Yeah, unfortunately for me, I'm a licensed broker. So I, I, what I would do in the past that when I get this, these people calling me back and they say they want 200 for it, but I want to give them 120 for it. I said, look, listen, I'll tell you what. If you want to sell fast, I'll give you 120 right now. We can close in seven days. Yeah. But if you want top dollars for it, then I'll tell you what. Lucky for you today, I happen to be a licensed realtor broker. I will yeah. throw your property on the MLS and we'll try to get top dollars for you. And if it doesn't sell in the next 90 days, I'm still, uh, I'm still willing to buy your property at you know, the 120. Yeah. So, so, you know, you're actually providing a little bit of a full-time service. You know, uh, and, and, and guess what? If, if it sells on the MLS, I get a commission, so I'm not wasting my time anyways, you know? But if it doesn't sell uh, uh, 30, 60, 90 days from now, he's not gonna be looking for an investor because he knows that I'm already an investor. Yeah, yeah. He knows that if, if he knows that if he's getting divorced with his wife, he wants his money now, he knows that I can just pay cash for it, you know? But if he wants top dollar, then he just ha has to wait a little bit longer. But usually what I've noticed in the past is that those, they'll want high, but the invention, what's gonna happen is say, Zach, you know what, I tell you what, and never, never mind. Just, just give me the one twenty. You know. Yeah. So I've been able to buy properties like that simply because I'm always in his face. I, every week I say, Hey, look, listen. I mean, this is what's happening. Nobody's buying, or market change, or whatever. If you still want, I'll just take it off your hands right now. You know. So just by maintaining contact with this guy, he and I have a relationship now. If he's gonna sell this to anybody else, he's not gonna sell it to the next investor. He's gonna sell it to Zach Fang because Zach Fang has been with him this whole time. So that kind of oh. gives a little bit of an advantage there. Yeah, that one's really good. I, you know? I know you got to go on to the next one, but that one's really good. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> I'm telling you, listen, <laughs> it works. I, I've made a lot of deals like that uh, uh, simply because once I list the property, they, those people and me, we become friends. You know, it's no yeah. longer uh, 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 me chasing a listing. You know, we, we become friends. So keep that in mind. If you're not licensed, you should be licensed just for that purpose. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the well, fourth or even if you're not licensed, go partner up with a licensed realtor, like you said, you know? Yeah, exactly. You That's get, the, you get the wholesale deals, the realtor get all the retail deals, right? And and, and getting real and getting real estate licenses, it's it's a joke. It's very easy. So um yeah. It's not a big deal. Yep. Anyways, and then the fourth thing is basically a network, you know. I like networking. Go to these uh, real estate association meetings in your local market and get to know all the movers and shakers and wholesalers. And here's the key. I, and I bought a lot of properties this way. I will have these wholesalers wholesaler to me, you know, and then I in turn wholesaler again. Like again, again, like you said too, as long as the property have enough meat on the bone, enough equity, I don't really care what he pays for it. As long as there's still room for me to make money, I'll tell the wholesaler, listen, don't send it to anybody, send it to me first. So yeah. I network with other wholesalers and instead of me chasing that deal, so here's what happens. These whole wholesalers will spend a ton of money in marketing to get these uh, really good deals, right? And they bring them directly to me, and I spend zero dollar marketing. So yeah. when they get the wholesale deal, maybe they market up five or ten thousand. I don't really care, you yeah. know, because if there's still enough room, I say, look, listen, John, don't go anywhere. Come to me first. So I get a, a lot of these wholesalers coming to me and bringing me deals, feeding me the deals, and I don't have to go looking for the deals. And they're, they're the guys spending the money. So if you network like that, you're going to get one or two deals from wholesalers again every single month simply because these guys, they need to get rid of these properties. And if you're, you happen to be on their, what do they call it, cash buyers list, yep. then you get free properties without even marketing. Okay, so that's kind of a cheapy way of um, getting real estate done. Yep. And then the fifth way, which I'm new to this game, is online marketing. So I'm working with a couple of people on this, trying to develop this platform here. And I think that this... You know, this along with other stuff will probably uh, uh, work well too. I'm not a pro at this. I don't know how this works yet. And so I'm still um, kind of fumbling around with Facebook marketing, attraction marketing, and I'll fill you guys in later on, on how that works. But at the end of the day, guys, here's what you need to do. You need to have at least three marketing game plans. 
going at the same time. Maybe direct mail, maybe online marketing, maybe networking, but you have to have three systems going on the, uh, uh, at once all the time so that you have deals coming in every single month so that you're not always wondering, okay, where's the next deal coming in? So you have to have three machine going at the same time. All right, guys? Man, that's good. So I, that's I'm, I'm gonna do this show so that I could get tips for you. That's all. <laughs> I got like a bunch yeah, of things. Yeah, like I say, a lot of these you guys, a lot of these you guys, a lot of these you guys are already doing. But sometimes you just need to be reminded of it. You know, yeah. like me, me. I need to be reminded of the things that I already know. You know, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, that's so good. I'm, I'm, I'm for sure gonna uh, check out auction yeah. stuff and, and go work with the realtor. I am a licensed realtor, yeah. but we kind of do like more commercial stuff. Um, so I am still investing in some residential stuff to kind of push over to commercial right. properties. But right. I mean, that, that's a separate story. Right. Okay, so once you get all the deals, use like two or three of your strategies that you mm -hmm. talked about to find the deals. How mm -hmm. do you, or what are some ways for you to fund it? I know we talked about like hard money. I touched on some of the lists. But then, what are some examples that you actually done that you you use? Yeah, so yeah, so let's review the uh, the funding deals, and then I'll go through yeah. one of the uh, uh, strategy that I use that I don't think anybody used. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, first of all, like you talk about, you know, private lenders. You know, so private lenders are basically people that have money. So you know, if you if you talk to people who have four hundred one k money, IRA money, or uh, money in the city, the bank that's not doing much, simply say, hey, look, listen, uh, John, I tell you what, you got. You know, 200 grand your 401k and yeah. why don't we do this and why don't why don't we kind of joint venture and uh you know loan me that uh uh 200 grand there and i'm going to secure on the first lien a piece of property so you basically have very little risk involved if if anything at all um uh, uh and then uh what happens is that six months from now i'm going to turn this property and i'll throw you maybe uh, some equity in the property and some interest along the way you know so that's one way of getting private lenders and there's a lot of people that have ira monies and bank cds and 401k money that they just need somebody to educate them on how to use that money all right so that's yeah. private i think big cd is like 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 uh 1.5 percent or something like that so yeah, if, you, exactly. if you just beat 1.5 percent you're good right yeah exactly, exactly. and then they, what they don't know is that in the cd they you know, if they get a 1.5 percent inflation is at three and a half percent they're losing money every year right yeah just right oh there. yep yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry to cut you. All right. What's the next? No, one? no problem. And the second thing is uh, hard money. Hard money is very simple. Uh, if you guys do this, I I wish I knew this a long time ago. I love hard money, guys, because I didn't know a lot of people with money. If if you want to know how to find hard money, go to your local Craigslist. So, for example, if you are in Fresno, you know, just go to Craigslist in Fresno, look at uh, financial services or even the real estate section. You're gonna have all these hard money guys listing, you know, uh, that they want to lend money out. Yeah. Dude, there's tons of money out there if you just look for it. And it's so simple. Craigslist is free anyway. So these guys are putting these ads and you call them, get a bunch of those guys lined up so that when you find your property, you have the money available. It's pretty simple. So a lot of these lenders are local, a lot of them are nationwide, you know, uh, develop a relationship with a few of them so that when you do get a property locked up, you have the money ready and you're good to go. And so, 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 so. Um, get a, I use, what I used to do is I got a whole list of hard money lenders so that I can go through each one when I, when I need, uh, cause some of these guys there, they might have a couple million dollars. So they, if, if sometimes they, they run out of money. Yeah. You want to have a list of these guys so that when you have the deal, you're not just waiting on one guy. You have a bunch of guys that you just call and just go down the list and get the money you need. And get the yeah. Deal. With hard money lender, uh, uh, I said, if you just go to Google, you just search like hard money lender in your city, whatever city. Right. You like I'm here in Twin yeah. City. So I just search like hard money in St. Paul right. or hard money right. in Twin Cities. And there's a bunch of them uh, here already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so them. Contact them. Yeah. yeah. Tell them them. I give them a call, talk to them, kind of like, uh, kind of check them out. There's some of them, uh, I, I hate to say, some of them are scammers. So just, just be yeah. careful. So talk to them, talk, you know, just, you know, get into a conversation, test them a little bit and let them give you a pre-call or whatever, something like that. So that you have an idea. And then, yeah. And then, uh, you know, when you're ready, uh, the money's available for you. you yeah. I, I would say just don't pay any money up front. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Those are the right. scammers. The, the ones that they really, you know, do the actual work and, and then also get like references, you know? Like people that they worked with in the past and then call those other investors out. Um, yeah, remember, hard money lending mm -hmm. lenders, you're their client. So right. you know, they, they, you know, you, you have the right to kind of pick and 
and things like that. Um, the good thing about them is that they don't really care about the your your um, your, your credit score or, or things like that. They're more about the project. So right, uh, that's right. a good thing about them. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. And the good thing about the hardware lenders is that you know, <clears throat> once you um, work with them, you can actually make offers cash on a lot of these properties. And, and we're always talking about no money down because we're talking about cash, but not your cash. Cash, but it's the private lender's cash or the hardware lender's cash. So it gives your offer so much strength because you're you're going in with cash instead of saying subject to financing you know so that's going to help you a lot when it comes to uh, uh, competition with the uh, local uh, investors and things like that okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. um and then of course like you talk about credit lines you know get a heloc get a personal credit line from the bank you know uh, uh credit unions and local credit unions they're really good at line of credit so check with your uh bank you know talk to the banker let them know what you're trying to do and uh, slowly build a small line of credit. Eventually, they'll give you bigger, bigger lines and yep. you can use that to put down on the real estate. And then you, so if you have, let's just say if you have a $50,000 line of credit, you need to put 30 grand down. Well, you draw your line of credit and have the other lender lend the money. And now you got yourself 100% no money down deal right there, you know, just by simply getting money from here and getting money from here, you know? Yep. Uh, so it's, it's simple enough, you know? All right. What's and the last then, one? I'm excited about this one. This, I'm going to be taking notes. This, this is cool. So this next strategy here, uh, where to find the money, I, don't, I, I, I haven't heard anybody talk about it, you know, but uh, you can actually borrow money from your life insurance policy to do the deal. So a lot of people, so here's the thing. A lot of people, number one, uh, and, and, and by the way, it's not all life insurance are the same. Okay, so let me clarify that. If you own policies from the 80s and the 90s, you might not be able to do this as effectively. There, you know, it's kind of like the evolution of every product, right? So the financial industry has finally uh, evolved to a more adaptable product where, so there's new financial product that allows you to, to be very creative and it works really well for investors and entrepreneurs. So there's, there's this unique financial product out there that, it's an, and again, it's an insurance product that does, first of all, let me explain about the product, right? It does four things that no other investment vehicle does, period, all right? And, and, and I've done it because I did the research. So what it does, is it gives you stock, mar stock market-like returns. And as we know, in some years, the stock market could be 20, 30, 40%, right? So it gives you those kind of returns, stock market returns. But here's the second thing. It gives you no stock market losses. So you never lose money. So you get the gain, but you never lose money. So there's a floor, before, right? yeah, there's a floor, right? That, that that's, 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 that's kind of cool. So you get the gain, you, you never suffer the losses. So imagine this, imagine you never lose money. Yeah. If, if you know you never lose money, then guess what? Throw everything in, right? I mean, and that's basically what I did. I think that's Warren Buffett's rule, right? Rule number one, don't lose money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so as long as your cap, as long as your principal is it's safe. Money. It's yeah. not it's kinda it's kinda like going to the casino and you know that you never lose money. So you go to blackjack table, you throw everything in. If you win, they pay you, you lose, you lose, they give you your money back. I mean, dude, that's a cool <laughs> deal, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So I mean, I mean and, and, and it's a no-brainer, but some people just don't understand. So first of all, stock market returns, uh, uh never never lose money. Uh, number three, number here's the cool thing, number three, liquidity. Liquidity, meaning that you can take your money in and out anytime you want. Yeah. Just like just like a, a, a savings account or, or a checking account at the bank, it has liquidity. Okay. Yeah. And then number four, tax advantages. So your money grows tax free. You pull it out tax free. That's kind of cool. So I said, like I said, no other investment vehicle gives you these three, these four things: stock market returns, never lose money, liquidity, tax advantage, all at the same time. So that's, that's, the, that's the financial vehicle within a life insurance policy, the correct one. Not all of them are the same, the correct one. Yeah. And again, a lot of agents don't know how to utilize that particular strategy, you know? Huh. So, so, so here's, how, here's, here's what I did with this, right? I have a policy. It's actually, I have, we have, a, I have a bunch of these policies, but uh, my wife, we're just talking about this strategy. My wife had a policy we... And this is going back a couple of years ago. She had about thirty thousand uh, dollars, I think around thirty-five thousand in, in cash value in her policy. All right. So I saw a HUD property, and again, it goes back to what I'm talking about: online auction, right? 
So yeah. I saw a HUD property uh, online that I made a bid for thirty grand, and I won the bid. You know, it was in a, it was in a, it was in a crappy area of town, but you know, it doesn't matter, right? <clears throat> yeah. Where, where was, where was this property at? So uh, let's actually, yeah, let's actually dive into this property. Yeah, so we could exactly. go through this deal, and then you could teach us how you, you use your life insurance. Yeah, so it was, it was a it was a little single family house. It was a bank owned property um, in South Providence, uh, uh, Rhode Island, right? So so you know it was, you know, and uh, the mar the market has changed there now, but back then it was a little you know a little little weird, right? <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, so anyways, I went on HUD.com, a credit account. I, I placed the bid and I won it at 30000 You know, it's a single family home. I think it was like maybe four bedroom, one bathroom, but it needed work. It, you know, the, the plumbing was stolen. The boiler was stolen. You know, um, you know it, it, needed, it needed some work, you know, and okay. I, I, I gave up on rehabbing, right? So <laughs> what I did was, <laughs> what I did was I took, I, you know, and, and since I, I, was, I was teaching this, this financial strategy, right? I was teaching yeah. people about, this particular financial product. So I said, you know what? Let me let me test it. Let yeah. me make sure that it works before I go out there and start selling this product. You know? Yeah. So I called the insurance company uh, on my wife's policy, and, and um, you know, we we requested the money on Wednesday. All right. The closing the closing was going to be the following Wednesday, Wednesday of the following week. Right. So okay. I requested the money on Wednesday, and the insurance company. Uh, um, uh, I think I don't know if they wired the money. They sent the check, but we got the money by Monday, and we were able to close on Wednesday. So they, so we borrowed. She had thirty-five thousand, right? We borrowed thirty thousand so that we can pay cash on this little hut house. Okay, so we borrowed thirty thousand, pay cash for it. And here's what's really cool about this deal. I'll go through the whole deal here. So, but, but <laughs> before you, before you go further, what does your wife's policy look like? Like, what 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 type of policy? I mean, like. Was it a $2 million policy? That's why you have cash value? Oh, okay. so, so, yeah, great question. So the way you structure these policies that some people don't know how to structure. So you have the structure where you have the minimum, the minimum life insurance amount possible. Why? Because when you have the minimum life insurance possible, right, the cost of insurance is very low, all right? So that the, the max of your money goes into the cash value. That's the key. Uh -huh. so you want to you want to have the face amount of the life insurance as small as possible, so they have majority of your money going into the cash value. That's okay. the key. So you have to structure right. You got to meet with somebody who knows how to do. Otherwise, you're not gonna do it right. Uh, so, anyways, I think her face amount was probably maybe only three hundred thousand. It's not okay. a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, yeah, it's not a lot. For example, um, you know, it was three hundred thousand, but she was putting in like eight hundred bucks a month. So you can see yeah. the difference here. You yeah. know. You know, but if, if you were to do it the wrong way, that 800000 would have purchased her like $5 million, right? We don't yeah, need that. Yeah. Right? And the whole idea was to, is to have the money in this particular uh, policy, in this account, I should say. And then an insurance company, just so you know, it's just a bigger bank. So you basically borrow yeah. money to this giant bank. So instead of like getting a CD at 1%, you're, you're putting your money in a bank account, essentially called life insurance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what's worse, and what's worse is that with CDs and 401ks, and they're not as flexible. They're not as liquid, you know? Yeah. You know, uh, if you take money out, you get penalized, you know? Here, yeah. no penalty involved. So anyways, $30,000 purchase on this uh, HUD property using life insurance cash money of 30 grand. So we pay okay. cash for the property. All right. Immediately, before, even before I close on it, right? Immediately, <clears throat> we... Uh, um, we found a guy who's going to pay 60 grand for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so right. you know, because, because the property, because the property was worth like 120 fixed up, right? Yeah. 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 So he paid 60 grand for it. Uh, and here's, what's really cool. I told him, uh, he didn't, you know, like I said, the property needed a lot of work, so he couldn't get financing. Yeah. Uh, so I said, look, cousin, don't worry, give me 20% down and I will hold the financing for him, for you. Yeah. So I took my wife's uh, 30 grand, pay cash for the property. We turned around, we sold it for 60. Uh, the guy put 20% down. Uh, I think he put like $12,000 down. So we yeah. held a note for 48,000. Uh -huh. first, first lien note for 48,000, which is the cool part. Because yeah. now I, I went from a seller to a private lender, right? Yeah. That's so what I get to charge. I get to charge private lender fees. So I charge the guy 19% interest on this. A forty-eight thousand dollar note. 
Right? Yeah. So if you, if you do the math and the calculation, 19% of 48,000 comes to 760 bucks per month. Oh, cash. Yeah. Yeah. No, no headaches, no rehabbing, no tenants, no toilets, no, uh, no court enforcement, no water, no sewer, no city tax, yeah. none of that stuff. Cash flow net 760 bucks per month from using so from using a life insurance policy. But that almost the, pay for the, the life insurance policy again now, where you don't huh? even have to that almost pay for the life insurance policy. So you don't even have to pay your policy anymore. Well, check this out. It, <laughs> get, it gets it gets better. It gets better. <laughs> it gets better. Let me let me let me yeah. let me go through the it gets yeah, better. So good. so first of all, we made a thirty thousand dollar profit on paper, right? Because we bought it for 30, sold it for 60, right? Yeah. The guy gave me twelve thousand dollars down, right? So I'm really I'm really lending just forty eight thousand right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm lending forty eight thousand, which thirty grand is real money, uh eighteen grand was paper money. So I'm making yeah. money from thin air, basically, yeah. right? I'm charging interest from thin air. Yep. Um earning seven hundred sixty dollars per month of cash flow. All right. But here's the really, really cool part about life insurance. When I loan the money out from my life insurance policy, my wife's life insurance policy, when I loan the money out, and that's the key word, loan, uh -huh. my uh -huh. money actually still sits there. The money in the life insurance policy still sits there. Yeah. And, and the market's been really strong the last 10 years. That year, in general, it happened to earn 20%. So guess what? My wife's 30 grand still there earning 20%, and 20% of that 30,000 is yeah. six grand. Yeah. So the life insurance they're earning six thousand dollars while I have the money to actually use it too. Yeah. You know? So instead of having your money doing one job for you, I actually have my money doing two jobs for me. Yeah. I'm actually doing what the bank's doing. So the money's still earning interest for me, and I yet I had the money to go and invest and earn more money with it. Yeah. So that's already like thirty nine percent just interest. It's crazy. <laughs> if you calculate the yield return, it's like almost fifty percent. The yield, yeah, oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, 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 the, 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 all the it's, cash that you get. That's not even the down payment. That's not even like that thirty extra thousand dollars that you got back or that you made as profit. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and just so you guys understand, this is working and this is being your own bank. Because if you look at how banks work, right? Yeah. When you put a thousand dollars in the bank. The government allows the bank to take that money and lend out 10 times. Yeah. They, yeah. they create paper money. Banks do yeah. that. So you give them a thousand, bank has 10,000 to lend out. Yeah. That's why when, when you put a hundred thousand in the bank in a CD, the bank technically have a million dollars to lend out. Yeah. So, so it's, so why not do the same thing? Take yeah. your money and be able not to be like the, we can't be like the bank, but we can at least let and do it two times. Have your money do at least two times instead of 10, but at least be able to do two jobs for you. Yeah. So, so this strategy here works really well. So let me, let me recap all the number and the total profit yeah. in this deal, right? So we made 30,000 from flipping the house, right? Yep. And, and, and a year later, he cashes out, right? So I'm, we made 9,000 on the 90% interest that we earned from him. Uh -huh. We made 6,000 from the life insurance policy earning the stock market-like return. So all total, if you calculate the total profit, thirty thousand, nine thousand, six thousand, a forty-five thousand dollar profit on an itty bitty little thirty thousand dollar HUD house. Man, yeah. and that's that. And that's insane. Because you're able to, you're able to make, you're able to make money work for you, leverage it in multiple ways instead yeah. of just one way. You know, yeah. Yeah. and that's what people don't know. People think that oh, I'm gonna save money in the bank. That's BS because the bank's getting rich on you. You're not making yeah. anything. You know, yeah, you know, so exactly. you gotta have your money work for you. Otherwise, you're gonna work for money. You know? So wow. that's kind of the key. So, and that's why I say that with this financial strategy, there's no other financial product that allows you to do that. Uh, meaning that you're getting all these benefits and you're getting life insurance on top of that with living benefits. And when you need your money, you don't need to do an application, no qualification. Just say, hey, where's my money? And they're gonna send you your money. I mean, it's very, so how very long, simple. How long did your wife have this policy for? Uh, this policy here, it was actually pretty new. What happened is that uh, she had a, I, I guess I'll, I'll name the name, it makes no sense. I, she had a New York Life policy that she was kind of losing money because it was in all kinds of equities. And, yeah. and so so we, we did a rollover. So oh, we did, yeah, we rolled over some money on top of that. So she had a, 
she has some money to start off with to, to put yeah. it that way you know yeah. um but if you guys uh, looked on my uh, uh, um, uh, recently uh, a couple of weeks ago, I put on Facebook that I, I took out eighty two thousand dollars from yeah, my life so, insurance. Policy. Yeah, yeah. How did that? Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's not this one. No, that's not. This is different. This is my wife. This is this is mine. That's why. You, that's why. If you look at, you see my name on this one. Oh, it's eighty two thousand. Okay. Got my name on it. You know, like I wanted to emphasize. So I took out eighty two thousand. I'm using that as a different strategy because I'm trying. I have a. I'm paying a, uh, I'm, I'm using that strategy to pay off my mortgage quicker. So I have a, I have a half a million dollar mortgage on my home here that I'm going to pay it off in about four years using the same strategy by taking the money out from my life insurance policy and mega paying my yeah. mortgage off sooner. And again, why? Because my money is still in the life insurance policy, earning all this return, but yet I'm also paying my mortgage in about yeah. Four or five years time. I think, they call, years time. I think they call that strategy velocity banking to pay off your mortgage like quicker. So so you don't you don't even just use uh uh life insurance policy, but you could use any type of line of credit. Uh, just the way you pay will 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 allow you to pay for that uh, quicker. But I think we I think that's gonna have to but, be another. But, but listen, but listen, yeah. the difference between velocity banking and what I'm doing is that again, velocity banking is that. <laughs> You're, do, you're using one strategy. Your money is working for you at one point. Yeah. Here, my mon money is working for me two ways. So it's still earning stock market return wow. while I'm paying off on my mortgage yeah. faster. Oh wow! So, yeah. so that's that's, that's so, awesome. so I'm still getting. I, I'm telling you, I'm still getting 15, 20 percent on my money in the market with no risk. Yeah. But at the same time, my mortgage is also being paid off. Yeah. So compare that to some people where. They work really hard and they paid off their mortgage cash, right? So they had zero mortgage. But guess what? They got zero money left. Yeah. Right? You know? So so when they when they lose their job, they go to the bank to apply for equity line. They can't get the equity line because they have no they don't have a job. Yeah. Compared to what I'm doing is that I'm gonna pay off my house completely, but I ain't got a ton of my money and my cash value. So if I lose my job, I simply pull the money up with no application, no requirements. I don't need to get a job to do that. Yeah. Wow, this is really good and advanced stuff. I think we might have to do another episode. No, yeah, and I mean again, we to discuss this. When, no, when I, you know, of course, this is just a short summary. When I do an actual seminar, it takes much longer. It takes a lot, a little bit longer to for everybody to to understand it mentally, because some people it just goes over their head, like they don't, they don't get. It. And and just so you guys know, the reason why it's so difficult to understand is because the agent who sold you your policy don't know this kind of stuff. And if yeah. they do know it, they, they're not like me. They haven't practiced it. They haven't actually taken it to buy real estate, you know? Yeah. So they know that they can borrow the money here and there, but they don't, they don't do it the way I do, where we actually teach you how to buy real estate with it and get rich with it. You know? Most, most insurance uh, uh, agents that sell these, they, they usually say like, Oh, you could take it out to buy a car or a house or whatever like that. But, but I mean, in your case, you know, you could kind of teach us to reinvest that money. Like, yeah, exactly. Oh, because, you know, yeah. of course, uh, you, know, you and I know this. If you take that money, you buy a depreciating asset, then you just killed yeah. yourself. But if yeah. you take that money and then you quadruple it in real estate, then geez, you're going to get rich way much quicker. You know, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Let's go back to that deal a little bit. Let's go back to that $30,000 deal. So you were able to make, you know, uh, how much was it? Like, I bought it, bought it for thirty yeah. and sold it for sixty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you still get like the. Uh, I mean, you're still lending. So you, on top of that, thirty thousand, uh, thirty thousand profit that you made, you're also making like the the interest on it. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. once once I lend the money, uh, so first I, I I bought it for thirty, sold it for sixty. The guy put twelve twelve thousand dollars down, so the actual note is forty eight thousand. Yeah, yeah. Forty eight thousand times nineteen percent, it comes to seven hundred dollars, seven sixty per month times twelve is over nine thousand per year. Yeah, so I got nine thousand coming to me. At the same time, the money that I loan out from the life insurance company, the money's still there. Yeah. I only need another six thousand dollars. You know. Yeah. So, so again, my money did two jobs for me. Yeah. You know? Earning six thousand, and I flip a piece of property with it, and I also charge hard money on top of that. So actually, in this, it did three jobs for me in this case. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, what about the the guy that bought the property from you? He lost money, or what? What happened? No, no. Actually, it was win win. So uh, great, great question. So he was um, he was a he was a contractor. He was a rehabber. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So he yeah he he had all the tools, all the equipment. He came in. Um, and he started immediately fixing it. He put a new driveway, he put a new bathroom, new kitchen, new flooring, new windows, patched the roof, everything else. 
did a little landscaping, uh, and I, and he actually had put a renter in there for uh, uh, yeah for a short time period, you know, and which is smart. So that he, he I think he charges renter like eleven hundred bucks. Yeah. So while he paid me seven hundred, he still cash flow too, you know. So it was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a, a year later, a year later, you know, he decided to sell it, and he sold it for. I think the market went up at the time. Sold it was worth one twenty, but at the end. When he sold, it went up to 130. He sold for 130 uh, through a regular conventional FHA buyer, and he he made it. I think he was in. He probably spent about 30 grand into it, so he was into it for 90. Uh, oh, he sold for 120, so he still made about a good 30 grand profit, some cash flow along the way. Um, and um, he came back to me. He said, "Hey, Zach, find me another deal." You know, so. So, uh, so you made money, but you helped him make thirty thousand dollars in profit. And yeah. you help him cash flow like five hundred dollars a month. Absolutely. So, it's, it's like I said, so so like it goes back to the beginning of what you mentioned earlier. The deal has to have it has to be a good deal, so yeah. that you can structure so that everybody wins along the way. Yeah, yeah. But that's kind of the key. I so, think maybe uh, my my life insurance policy. Maybe I'll have to have you look at it, but. Right now, I need you to help me make that too. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. What did you just give with them? No, um, I don't. I don't chase people to sell these policies. You know, I, I hate chasing people. Uh, I, I am licensed to sell these policies. If you want to learn more about it, reach out to me, message me. I'll I'll show you. I'll run some illustrations for you. I'm not gonna chase you. I hate chasing people, and I don't really care if you buy or not because I'm getting rich anyways. So yeah. I'm gonna share you the strategy on how to do it so that you can get an opportunity to use your money to double up on it and make and leverage it so that you can, you can make more money. I'm willing to teach you that, uh, but I'm not going to chase anybody. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you guys are just joining us, um, you know, we are sort of, Oh wow. We, 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 we've been talking a long time. So <laughs> it's going to go fast. I told you that. <laughs> uh, if you guys have any questions, we will open up for questions. So go ahead and please like uh, share if you're able to, if you're on, uh, YouTube or watching this later. Um, uh, also, ask your questions because then you know we'll we'll at the end in a little bit, maybe like five ten minutes, we'll answer any questions that you guys have. So it could be mainly about real estate, but uh, questions about anything as well. So welcome to all you guys that just joined us. But please do write your questions. I know that we talk. Uh, I mean, I know that this strategy is pretty advanced, and so if you guys have questions about that strategy, uh, we could discuss it more as well. Uh, let's go back to, um, uh, let me see, what was that? Uh, let's go back to this deal. Okay. What, what, yeah. what lessons, like, uh, what lessons have you learned from this deal? So, you know, uh, when, when I did this deal, I was super excited. I said, oh my God, this, this product really works, you know? And, and on top of that, what I also did next was that I started to, um, max, Max, they call it max funding, my uh, particular uh, uh, policy, you know? Yeah. And the reason why you call it max funding because there's only so much you can dump into your policy you know, without, you know, uh, going over certain guidelines. So I started max funding into my policy. So every time when I flip deals, I throw as much money as I can in there. And the whole reason why is because, again, I can take the money out anytime and it's got the flexibility, you know, um, and, uh, that I can, I can move it. And it's growing tax free. So it's earning 15, 20% tax free. So when it's tax free, it compounds so much quicker yep. you know, than, than, than taxable. Uh, but on top of that, I mean, that was just a real estate deal. So it's it, to me on the, on the real estate side of it, it was a simple, you know, buy wholesale. So it, it's nothing, nothing new on the real estate side of it. It's just that the intro, introducing the life insurance product was new to me, but flipping that deal was pretty simple. And again, guys, even if you don't use the life insurance, just go in there and, and look at these auction side. That was an auction side. That was that was through a HUD, HUD. It was a HUD home store that I went in there and I bid on this property. And you know, it, the property needed work, but I knew that there was enough room that I can make work. And and sure enough, um, you know, it, it it was a grand slam. You know. So, well, I I took from the lesson or the the, uh, the times I've been talking to now is to find a partner like your wife because that's sort yeah. of the theme that you have going on. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you have money, Zach, but you kept using other people's money. And <laughs> that's, that's the key. Well, you know, I mean, I can't really be talking about no money down if I keep using my money, right? You know, so, <laughs> yeah. so I got to purposely find other, other people's money just to do it so we can, we can have a conversation. You know, yeah. otherwise, 
otherwise everybody's going to say, well, but you started with money, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Gonna, they're going to have that excuse, you know? Well, what, what uh, I found is that the, 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 uh, the big investors or the good investors, regardless of where they're at, they always uh, do little, no money down because they, right. they, they strategize and use other type of funding and, you know, like yeah. put that, that deal together, you know? And, and the whole key to it is, it's all about, oh, yeah, I, I think I remember you, you or somebody posted that, um, I don't know, how do, you, how do you start out with zero money? The whole key to, to making money with zero money is to find a way to really leverage money, leverage yeah. money, right? So, you know, in this case, it was a classic example of leveraging. So if you start with zero money, find somebody's money and leverage it, you know, meaning that how can you maximize the money, you know? And, and that's kind of the key to it. So a lot of these investors that you talked about too, uh, that the reason why they're not using their money is because let's just say they have a hundred grand, well, they, they, can, they can pay a hundred grand for one property or they can turn around and buy uh, 10 properties with $10,000 on each, on each yeah. deal, right? Yeah. So if they buy 10 properties, they have the opportunity to make way more than just one property. So yeah. it comes yeah. down to, again, leverage. You know, that's why these investors, these savvy investors that you talk about, they don't use their money. They might use a few dollars, but they want to use that few dollars on a lot of properties so that they can get bigger returns you know that's kind yeah. of yeah, okay that's awesome i think we're getting towards the end of uh, to, uh, uh today's hours uh yeah uh, i i learned a lot so i'm gonna take a lot of this and apply it uh hopefully you guys did too uh if you guys have any questions please write your questions below uh i did put a post uh of uh, a day ago or something like that so they do uh there are a few questions that uh, people ask so i'm gonna ask you those questions after. sure yeah yeah but, do, but before we go to the questions, is there anything else you want to add or, 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 or what's up? Uh, no, no, pretty much. Uh, yeah, uh, we're running out of time. So we'll, we'll wrap it up with the questions. And uh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do another segment next time. Okay. All right. This question says, let's see. If you guys have questions later on the YouTube channel, go ahead and, and you're watching this later. Go ahead and leave that comment below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, it's either we reply back to it or, or I'll use those questions to ask later on, okay? Uh, let me see who's on here. We have some people on here. Um, can you guys send me your YouTube link? Oh yeah, Don, I'll send it to you later um, in a little bit. Uh, I'll tag you or something like that. Uh, let's see. We have less questions this week. Maybe you're really thorough. <laughs> that's fine either that way it went over the head <laughs> uh, okay uh, here's a question from chi chi kong t or something like that um here's a non oh non-real estate question oh it's a non-real estate question okay maybe it kind of goes in line with, with what we talked about today. yeah yeah um a question uh, it's pretty long so uh if i'm if I'm retired with a ton of money in my pension, what is the best strategy, a strategic way to withdraw from the pension without being penalized with tax? Do you know about pensions? Or yeah, uh, pen, it depends on what you have. Some of them you could uh, withdraw. If it's in an IRA, things like that, there are certain strategies. And if you message me, I could get you uh, and hold the right people that you can actually uh, take it out completely without paying taxes. So. But you got to do it the right way. If you don't, then there's a lot of penalties involved and you're going to lose half of what you have. So just be careful uh, with, with that. Yeah. I think if you're able to roll it to like, uh, uh, or, or move it over, I mean, if you're retired. So well, if you're able to move over to like SDIRA or something like that, then you can yeah. self-direct that to to yeah I'll, I, the key to it is that I'll, I'll have to look at what you have to really figure it out because you know uh when you say pension it's very vague so yeah. I'll, I'll, i have to look at what you have and you know and then we can figure it out but you know if you're if you're interested uh reach out to me and i'll you know i'll, I'll help you with it you know or at least direct you in the right direction yeah uh i don't think the group has question okay uh, what, are the, what were uh let's see there are some questions here. Sorry, I have all my notes. There. I wrote down too much stuff, so it kind of covers some of the, the questions that I had. I'm sure that I'm sure that once they watch the video, they'll have some questions. You know, so yeah, they'll probably yeah. post questions later on. It's, you know. Okay, so that's cool. We're already kind of done with the hours, anyway. Okay. So okay. yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, right. yeah. Uh, more personal stuff. Um, 
or or let's get back to some uh, recommendations that you have again. Uh, I just want to kind of close it again. Uh, yeah. So, so to close it, yeah. Any, any recommendations that you have uh, to to kind of get someone started to close their deal uh, uh, soon? You know, because we so talk a lot you, about stuff. So yeah, if you want to, if you're new and you want to close your next deal in the next sixty days, then basically like do what I said. You know, and get to know your market a little bit. Start looking at real estate. Stop going to I and mean, continue to. Look at some, uh, you know, look at open houses, just kind of getting your mindset into the whole thing, you know? Yeah. A lot of it has to do with mindset. Just kind of get your mindset into the real estate game. Uh, talk to investors. Uh, and then from there, find a marketing strategy that's going to work, like I talked about earlier, either direct mail, working with realtors, networking, things like that. Have those three marketing ideas in place so that, you know, you can have deals kind of coming to you all the time. And then also on top of that, you know, start to network with uh, private lenders or hard money lenders so that you can have your money lined up so that when you have your property, you'll be ready to, uh, to uh, execute and make it happen. And then probably the third part that's a little, um, you know, it was challenging to me in the beginning and I think it might be intimidate to a lot of you new investors that uh, the, the paperwork piece of it. You yeah. know, maybe get with the realtor and start looking at offer forms and uh, purchase sales agreement forms and addendums and disclosures. Start looking at those paperwork so that once you do a deal, you're not so intimidated with it that you're used to it. And it's not a big deal. It's just paperwork and it's just agreements. But start reading those kind of contracts so that you kind of get yourself in, into the most. And then you're not so scared when you are ready to do your deal. You're like, okay, what's this? What's that? So. I would encourage you to start kind of looking at those kind of stuff and get yourself ready. Because I remember when I was trying to do my first real estate deal, those paperwork really intimidated me. You know, like I didn't know where to start, what to do. You know, so uh, and then I, you know, I did my first deal and it was simple. But I would encourage you to start looking at those stuff. Even if you haven't done a deal yet, start looking at those paperwork. Have a realtor print some of them for you, or have a friend or whatever, or even go online and look it up. But uh, Definitely uh, get used to those paperwork if you're new. If you're not, if you're already experienced, then those that that's pretty simple. But I know that as a newbie, uh, a long time ago, I was very intimidated with the paperwork. You know. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, I, I was too. But um, like it's just a matter of looking at it. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot it. of stuff, but there's people that help you with it. Like your realtor is gonna help yeah. you. Yeah. Um, your loan officers will look at some of the financial stuff the title yeah. company or your attorney based on wherever you live, they're going to help you through that paperwork. Right. So it's not like you have to understand every single piece of it, but you know, just kind of look at it to, to, to kind of see where it's at. So you're not intimidated or afraid by it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the key. Uh, here's a question from Chai. Uh, who do you follow as mentors? Like what are some of your mentors or who are yeah, some? You know, like, um, I guess I don't particularly have any mentor, but I'm a big student of, um, learning so i read a, a lot of books like i i didn't have a formal education so i always feel that i always feel that little lacking so because of that to make up for it i read a ton of business books uh i i, I every year i read uh, uh anthony robbins uh awakening the giant within every year i, have, I read the book yeah. over yeah, it's, it's a classic to me it, it you know i mean i love the way the guy his story and everything else i especially love listening to him and he, he yeah. wakes me up all the time um and uh, I read a lot of uh, books on real estate, a lot of books on business, uh, even stocks. I mean, I, I just try to get myself as well-rounded as possible um, when it comes to uh, learning. And I guess learning is, um, is a lifelong thing. So uh, I'm always looking to learn new ideas, new concepts, new strategies, because like I said, things are always evolving. And if we're not growing, then we're dying, right? You know, so that's the key. so you constantly want to grow mentally, uh, uh, financially, have a, a, a better financial IQ and everything else. And uh, that's kind of what I strive to do. Uh, and uh, but when it comes to mentor, I basically, you know, try to follow everybody. Uh, and, and, you know, because everybody's a little unique and different, you know, like you got Maxwell teaches a, a little bit about leadership. Tony talks about all kinds of stuff. And then you got you know, uh, Kiyosaki talking about, you know, cash flow and this and that, and you've got all these other uh, uh, people. So if you kind of read all of these books and do all of that, then you have a really good rounded knowledge uh, about motivation, self-development, financial, and all kinds of stuff. So just, just 
just dig into it, you know, and you find have any real, Do you have any real estate guys that you oh I'm getting echoes. Do you have any real estate guys that you're looking at or, or I, I I used to, but you know, after a while too, after a while they all they all sound the same, you know, because I, I no, but in the beginning, you're right. In the beginning, I read every real estate book possible, you know. Yeah. But after a while, you know, like after a while, after 20 years of doing all the, these deals, then it, it becomes, it, it, I, I'm hearing the same thing. Yeah. But if you can follow anybody, I guess the grandfather of um, all these gurus that are teaching now, the grandfather is, is this guy named Ron Legrand, you know. Because wow. uh, Ron Legrand has been around the 80s. Ron Legrand and Carlton Sheets, you know, uh, yeah. uh, have been around forever. Carlton, I don't know if he's, he disappeared, but Ron, Ron is still around. I think Ron is in Florida. Uh, yeah. But guy has written tons of book and you know uh he he actually taught a lot of these people who are teaching now basically you yeah, know you're like old school you're, you're putting yeah. your out there <laughs> well, i mean ron legrand if you go back i mean the guy like i said all these people that are teaching real estate this and that they basically picked it up from ron way back from the 80s and the 90s and they yeah. became you know and they, they of course and it's kind of like everybody everybody moves at a different pace so some guy might come in and he might take some of Ron's strategy and he, he made it work and boom, he goes and he starts teaching his own stuff and everything else. But they all kind of, I, I believe they all kind of, most of them branch out from uh, Ron Legrand. So that's kind of like the, the grandfather of real estate. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, as you know, I do most high family. So one of the yeah. guys I follow a lot is uh, uh, Michael Blanc. You know, he okay. does uh, most yeah. family. I think he has about 63 million in assets. Nice. Uh, right. the, the big guy is uh, Grant Cardone. He does. Uh, uh, yeah. He has probably about five or six thousand uh, yeah. units in, uh, under management right now. So yeah. those are sort of the two guys I follow because I'm in that that multifamily. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's it. That's it for this week. I got a lot of useful info. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I'm gonna go test out some <laughs> of these strategies myself uh, for my next project. Uh, if you guys just. Um, uh, if you guys can uh, comment, uh, I mean, especially on the YouTube channel, uh, go ahead and leave us a comment. What you guys like, what you guys don't like, and then topics that you guys want us to touch on, you know, to talk about and discuss. Um, I know that it's been Zach and I uh, uh, discussing a lot, but we might bring other guests that, are, that specialize in topics that you guys are interested in. So, uh, or if you guys know someone that you guys want us to discuss and talk with, let us know. Uh, leave us a comment below, too. Anything else, yeah. Zach? No, that'll do it. Great job. All right. Thanks a lot, man. I'll see you next uh, week. Okay. All right. All see right, you next see week. You guys. All right, later. Yeah. Yeah.